I'm Lydia Funk. I'm General Secretary of Church and Peace, the European Ecumenical Peace Church Network. Could you please tell us what is Pathways to Peace and why is it important for the European churches? Pathways to Peace was um, started as an initiative responding to the full invasion of Ukraine in 2022 and the churches of Conference of European Churches came together to discern how we can respond in a meaningful way and what it needs on the path towards peace and how we can be engaged. To me, it's a very fascinating initiative and a good sign of cooperation of churches. What inspires you to be part of this initiative and what is it trying to achieve? Coming from a Mennonite background, as one of the historic peace churches, um, peace and ethics is at the heart of um, theology and our life as church and as Christians. So finding a concrete way of putting this into practice is important for my life as a Christian, but also um, peace churches around Europe and peace church groups. So that's why it's important to look at what it needs, how we can um, have an impact and also see the needs of uh, people who are suffering from conflict. So it's been almost uh, over a year that the war in Ukraine has been going on and the initiative Pathways to Peace has been established as well. How do you see the journey of this initiative and how it's responding to the war and its impact? It's always difficult to measure impact uh, of peace work while the weapons are still crying loud and are um, killing people every day. So one of the things that I see positive from this Pathways to Peace initiative is bringing people together on the table and um, being in contact, listening and hearing, um, like we did at the CAC Assembly in Tallinn, to hear how life is on the ground and hear how people are affected and what they need. So it's not a, a thing of, um, I'm sitting at my desk nice and comfortably and thinking of, how can I help Ukraine? But rather, being in touch, asking questions, asking Ukrainians, how can we support you and what is um, difficult and how can the churches support you with overcoming this. And one of the things is that we've heard in the past that the division between churches are painful, additional to all the other um, separation and hardship that's going on. So my hope is that Pathways to Peace can help in this aspect to bring people together to share and to focus on our Christian, um, what connects us in our faith. Do you see the role of young people important to Pathways to Peace? Of course. I think youth are important in many aspects and most of the aspects because they're living through difficulties. They are living now and are in a phase of their life where um, the future paths are shaped. So. Involving them in conversations and involving them in projects and in yeah, conversations about how does the future look like and how can we make it a future for everyone. I think that's important to also have youth at the table and youth shaping what this future is going to look like. We are speaking about wars, conflict and the impact that it has on the region. As a Christian, where do you see the hope? As a Christian, I see the hope... Uh, in Jesus. Um, the life of Jesus um, is an inspiration throughout hardships. Um, he was also living in a time of oppression and um, it was not easy. And still we have these texts that tell us he was proclaiming nonviolence and um, yeah, gathered people around him who wanted to change the realities with nonviolent means. And Rereading those stories and discussing them um, is something that gives me hope. And I see lots of people active and working to overcome conflict in other regions, be it uh, in the former Yugoslavia or um, Britain. Um, we can learn a lot from what these people have been going through and how they are working to overcome it. Mm -hmm.